true crime, there are many stories that challenge us. There is no such thing as right and wrong, good guy and bad guy. Or is there? Some of my content has mention of extreme violence, sexual assault, and or other triggering content. Discretion is advised. All right. Well, today I'm going to challenge everything you thought you knew. I don't. <laughs> Completely. Like, it's, it's everything you thought you knew. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm already thinking I don't know a lot, so here we go. <laughs> it's not challenging a lot, but there's... There's going to be some challenge. There'll be challenges for everybody out there. Right. And it starts out kind of cut and dry. So here we go. 60-year-old John Eastman waited for 19-year-old Andrew Sorison outside of his address. John was tipped off that Andrew would be home, so John patiently waited until Andrew was vulnerable and alone. Then John abducted Andrew. He tied him up, put him in the trunk. As Andrew struggled to get free, begging for his life, John hit him in the head with a cinder block. Not once, but again and again. Each time harder and bloodier than the last. Not knowing whether Andrew was dead or alive, John took out a long knife. He repeatedly stabbed Andrew until he felt it was enough. Then John drove his car to a remote area and left it there with the body of 19-year-old Andrew Sorison still inside. That started out rough. Right? <laughs> started out real fast. <laughs> so uh, we're jumping in. Pretty cut and dry, right? I mean... Yeah, I mean, first first thought is I don't feel like I have those ages. I don't feel like I've heard crimes necessarily being committed in that... Um, Big of an age gap. Yeah, the big of an age gap, but then also like the older person being the one committing the crime because unfortunately it feels like a lot of times younger people are committing crimes on the much older people in some of those situations because maybe they're, I don't know if it's a vulnerability thing or what, but it's weird. It almost feels like reverse. Right. So, and I'm sure there's reasons for that, and I'm sure you're going to get to them. <laughs> I can see it in your face. <laughs> yep. There's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> I'm trying not to give away anything. Uh, I know. Um, so nearly a year later, some people noticed an old abandoned car in their neighborhood. It was an unlocked green 1991 Honda Accord. The neighbors were just curious. Um, as it was quoted in the article, they were rummaging through the vehicle. Hmm. Probably like, oh, it's been there a while. We'll just take whatever we can get, I guess. It's still kind of weird, but I mean, I, yeah. I kind of get it. Yeah. Maybe they were trying to find like who it belonged to, like find an ID or something. You're giving them a lot out. of credit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, they got hit with a foul odor and decided to look in the trunk. There they saw the body of a young man, zip tied with tape over his mouth and punctures in his clothing. The car led right back to John Eastman. The address where the car was registered was his. The car was his fiance's. He might as well have just given him a map, <laughs> it sounds like. Pretty much. Police questioned John, and he first said the car was stolen a year ago. And then he later admitted to driving the car to the remote location after killing Andrew. It's kind of... It's always interesting hearing how they get to that point, you know, mm -hmm. um, like it, how does, how does it go from, he's like, it was stolen. Actually, I did it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's my car. I never got stolen. I, Police I just, questioning can do a lot, especially I, I if they're not doing so. it in the right way. <laughs> if, if they, uh, if they had more evidence, I guess. And they're just like, we know you did it. So maybe you should just tell us. Right. Well, investigators went to work on motive. Why? John was a 60-year-old dad. He had never had any previous charges, and this crime was vicious and personal. After a while of questioning John, it all came out. 
So I'm, I'm going to make a guess, and you're not going to be able to tell me whether I'm right or wrong, but I'm immediately going the 19-year-old did something to the family. That's that's where I'm I'm headed with my mind in that. So go ahead. Right. <laughs> be prepared to question everything. This case is not as it appears. It will make you question everything. Are you ready? Yes. But I will say, before we get into this, seems... Pretty cut and dry, right? John's the bad guy. He went after Andrew. Andrew was, you know, I, a kid, pretty much, 19. So I know it's part of your storytelling and your writing, but the way you framed it at the beginning, <laughs> I'm I'm not thinking that way, actually. I'm thinking that the... Was John the older guy? Yep. I'm thinking John was, like, out for vengeance and the Andrew kid did something real bad is now where mm-hmm. I'm going with things, but mm-hmm. only because of the way you framed it. If I was... Right. <laughs> no, well, no framing, no storytelling, I'd probably be what you said. We're going to see if the punishment fits the crime. So what in your mind could this person have done to warrant all of that? I mean, I think it's, I feel like, like I said, attacking someone's family or doing something to someone's family. Um not saying that is justified or isn't justified. Um, I never really condone violence. So, I mean, there, there are times where people do stuff so bad that I hope they spend the rest of their life in prison, but I'm not going to say, Hey, go out and murder somebody because they did something. So, but then again, I don't know how angry I would be in that situation. So you don't believe in like vigilante, what is it? Vigilante. Vigilante justice. I, I try not to. I definitely understand the urge that there would be that urge, but like that's you know, I, what is it they say? An eye for an eye makes everyone blind, or something like that. So Good I mean, point. but at the same point, in time you mess with someone's family, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I I get their anger. Okay. Well, tells you I'm long enough. <laughs> yep. Uh, John killed Andrew because Andrew sold his teen daughter into sex trafficking. Oh, God, that's worse than I expected, actually. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, unfortunately, like, I kind of expected something in terms of, like, abuse or, like, sexual assault or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Is kind of, and I did, I did feel like it might be his daughter, but like selling, selling her into sex trafficking is, I think, probably one of the worst things that could happen because, at that point, it's going to be hard to, for him to find her. It's mm-hmm. going to be, you know, I said sexual assault. That's one or two. You know, how many ever sexual assaults, but like sex trafficking is like that becomes their life and so yeah that's that's one of the worst things i could think of that he would have done yep so just hearing that line in the story does it change how you feel about the situation um well like i said i understand the rage for sure definitely with it being as bad as what it is i absolutely understand the rage Mm mm-hmm um, and I don't know. I guess it depends on if he thought that, you know, if just nothing was being done about it. Like, if they're just like, yeah, we don't care about it. And they're like, he thought they were never going to, I don't know, they were never going to do anything. I, and I don't know what happened to the, to the girl in that situation either. Uh-huh. Um, so part of me thinks maybe they could have, help track her down if the guy that sold her was still alive. I don't know. There's a a lot of thoughts in that. Right. So she is alive. She's safe. They found her shortly after. That's good. Um, Just so you don't. (laughs) Well, I think. (laughs) Spiral on. Oh, no. What happened? I think that. uh, I I do think that changes my. (sighs) I think it changes how I feel about things a little bit in the fact that like I would probably be more willing to 
let the legal system run its course if but will it i mean sex trafficking i know i know and i'm not saying you know like not saying that it will do the right thing and then probably john ends up doing the exact same thing here he did but at least he tried the legal system i don't know i would be so furious that i don't know if i would be able to rationalize the paths right and so i i do kind of get that and i you just don't know what you would do in that situation you want to say you'd be like i can i can take the high road i can you know i can get him to prison for life but then when you're that angry who knows how you're going to react right all right so uh, let's get a little bit more of information here all right the victim was john's underage daughter and her boyfriend andrew sold her into a sex trafficking ring for only a thousand dollars i can't imagine what mm, she went through yeah um however her mother and her father tracked her down and rescued her it's good for them right um i don't know how they did that but uh, i mean they must have been on it quick they must have yeah after hearing the story of what Andrew did, John decided to take the law into his own hands. That is when he tracked him down and killed him. John's daughter is safe at home, and her family thinks that John is nothing but a hero. He has many supporters online across the country that think that he should be set free from prison. As of last year, John is still in prison and charged with first-degree murder. Now, was, there is um, another side to the story, but first was so first degree is premeditated mm -hmm. see i don't know about that part because i wonder how much of it is premeditated and how much of it is like a um rage yeah and what i think that would be a lesser usually a lesser murder charge i thought but well he did wait outside in yeah, that usually, for that whole time that usually kind of hurts your case <laughs> a little bit yeah. yeah but man it's such a tough one because i mean i yeah I, I, that's hard i don't know whether to applaud him or say hey <laughs> you just don't murder somebody over it you did good and then don't murder someone right i mean he he did do good he went they went and got her mm -hmm. they you know I don't know what, if all, they could have proven and right. if any time Andrew would get, if all at all, but they could have gone that route. Instead, he went the other route. Right. Uh, it's he didn't tough. kill him. So it's not like you can't, you can't say like, I don't know. You can't say he didn't do it. Yeah. So let's hear the other side to the story. All right. Um, cause there's always two sides to the story. Um, Andrew Sorison was adopted as a baby. His family describes his life. He was diagnosed with cerebral palsy as well as autism. Um, he eventually had struggles with mental health issues and substance abuse. His parents say he would never harm anyone. The story that Andrew's parents got was a whole different one. They say that Andrew brought John's daughter around with some other kids that they explained were homeless. Andrew's family helped these kids as much as possible with housing, food, and other things. However, one night, Andrew and these friends, including John's daughter, took the family car for what they say was a joy ride. They went into the neighboring city of Seattle. She then says that some girls were dropped off in the city, but they had left their phones in the car. Then, after that, the car was stolen leaving her son Andrew stranded with no phone and no way home. Somehow Andrew got back home and John's daughter was picked up by her parents. She went to a hospital to get a rape kit, but none was done. This could be for many reasons. Just wanted to point that out. Right. Uh, <laughs> the investigators did say that they cannot corroborate the story of sex trafficking. So now they are left with just two different sides of the story. So even even now they still looked into the sex trafficking part of it and they can't corroborate it. Right. How do you feel about the story? I I think there was a lot of 
things that conveniently happened on Andrew's side. And I'm That's not, what I thought. I'm not saying that maybe it was even Andrew. Like it, it could have been that one of the other friends of Andrew was like, we're going to do this. And Andrew's like just there. Right. And he's the one who got, you know, he's the one who they said was the main part of it, but it could have been the other friends. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's part of why people say the whole vigilante justice isn't a good thing too, because I mean, there's no real investigation into that. Um, if he was not actually doing anything, he wasn't actually part of it and the friends did it all, then he basically got punished for the crime. But then I guess you'd have to imagine probably the daughter told the dad mm-hmm. about a lot of what happened. So I'm guessing the dad in that situation probably had a lot of the story mm-hmm. um, that even investigators probably wouldn't get. Right. I don't know. I'm going back and forth because there's two <laughs> sides fighting in my brain right now. There's it is. The, the side that's like, you know, if somebody really did do that to her, that's awful. And I don't really feel too bad for that person. But mm-hmm. like, then if there's a chance that that person was innocent and they you know, didn't get to tell their story and then they just got beat with a cinder block to death. That's kind of sad too. Um, it, it does. This story, it's why I picked it and why it's such a good one is because you don't know. There's right. two sides to every story. There's, I tend to believe the victim that right. this happened, but yet like, even then, I'm like, does the punishment fit the crime? Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Because he, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what even he would get for that. Right. And it is it is very convenient that, oh, they these two girls left their phone in the car. Yeah, it just got dropped off in the city without their phones. And- mm-hmm. I mean, ever since we had cell phones, they were attached to to us. Like, right. <laughs> nobody goes anywhere without a cell phone now. Yeah. Um, it could have been that they he sold them for a night, and then these people took her, took them, took her. Right. Um, still, it's not great, but yeah. um, maybe that's why she didn't have her phone too, is because right. she was working. Right. Not working, but being sold. Right. I mean, um, it's it's just all of it is back and forth, and I don't know what to believe. Yeah. And uh, if I'm that way, then what do the cops do? Because there's no evidence. Right, and well, and unfortunately, too, <laughs> at, at this point, they, I feel like they. I don't know if I want to say an out. That might not be the right way of saying it, but they're like. In their minds, they're they're probably almost like, well, okay, so if there were somebody that sent her into sex trafficking, it's this person who's now dead. Uh-huh. The person who killed her is now in prison. So, I guess we're done here. <laughs> like, I'm sure that's yes. probably some of how they they handled that. They they may have looked into things a little bit, uh-huh. but I don't know that they're like. And we're going to go get a conviction out of this case because. What do you think you would convict? What do you, if you were a juror, if you were handing out, what would you hand out the sentence for John? Uh, For John? Mm -hmm. Um, For killing Andrew. Yeah. Well, I definitely think lesser than first degree. I know he waited and I know that's always tends to make it premeditated and. Probably by the definition, it it probably is premeditated. But I do think that you can, in a situation like that, you can be seeing so much rage over what happened to your family member that you are in like a longer period of being psychotic, I guess, or psychosis or however you want to say it. Uh I, I mean, I don't think, I think you can lose your, ability to rationalize for longer than 
just the time he was out there waiting. Like, I don't, I, I think it should be a lesser murder charge. I mean, he did murder someone, so I feel like you have to give him something. But I do think I would have probably given him less than what they gave him. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, it, it's, it's a hard one. I have gone back and forth because I don't, I don't know. And I, this one is a shorter case, but you know now why I picked it. <laughs> right. Well, and it almost goes to the whole somebody breaking into your house and you shoot mm-hmm. somebody who breaks into your house. Well, right. technically you're a murderer, but you're also defending your family. So mm-hmm. in your house and, and you have a right to do that. This is just kind of outside of the house. So, I mean, legally following the law to the letter, I feel like he has to get something, whether or not people want that or not. Right. They think legally that has to happen. I think they also probably don't want more people going out and doing that. Because uh-huh. if, you know, if he gets nothing for going out and doing that, then... I mean, anytime something happens to one of our family members, it's just going to be right chaos because everybody's going to be going at each other. Um, so mm-hmm. I feel like something has to be like he has to get something. Just maybe he didn't need to get as much as what he got. Right. I mean, maybe this was well worth it for John because he's 60 right. years old. You know, that thought crossed my mind, too. Yeah. He was like, you know, you hurt my family. I don't got that much time. In the grand scheme of things left. And the, the thing that sticks in my mind, too, is that, like, you said the family thinks of him as a hero. Mm-hmm. That, to me, means, and I, I mean, just from your story already, I thought this, but the daughter went through a horrible experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and for them to both think of him as a hero in that scenario, that what Andrew did and what she told them about what he did, I feel like has to be pretty bad. Right. Um, For them to, you know, be in that mind frame where they're like, yeah, he was so bad that this was justified. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But then I look at it and I think there are so many people who their children get taken Mm -hmm. and, murdered and raped and all of this stuff and they don't kill. Right. So it's... And then what do you... But yet, would they if they could? Right. Probably. I was going to say, what, what <laughs> happens if you say, okay, well, you know, it's fine in this situation and then it happens to someone else. And they're like, well, it was fine for him. I'm going to do it. Right. <laughs> and we would probably be having that same conversation about them too because I can... Yeah, I can think of several... Um, several cases where that's happened to kids and like young kids and guaranteed that the people who lost their young kid would, would want to do that. Yeah. And if they got the chance, they probably would have. Mm -hmm. So, and honestly, if I got the chance, would I, I, that's why I was like, that's why I was like, it's so hard to put yourself in that situation because that's what I mean about the prolonged sense of, of rage. Cause I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to get over, you're not just going to like in a day be like, okay, you know what? I'm better now. I can forgive that person. Like that's not something that happens in that short of a period of time. You are going to be livid for so long yeah. and you don't know what you're going to do in that period. You don't even know how your brain chemistry is going to (laughs) change from being angry for as long as you would be angry. Right. It may just become part of who you are at that point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, that's a tough one. That's one that's probably we'll never know the answer to um, without being in that situation. Hopefully we're never, never in that situation. Right. Hopefully no one that's listening is ever, ever in that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but really anybody, I just would like that to stop in general. Right. But I do want to know your thoughts on this case, um, because to me, I found it just a big conundrum. Um, (laughs) And I want to know what everybody thinks, Mm -hmm. everybody's opinion. Um, If you think that John's a hero, 
by all means, let us know. This is it's a discussion. It'd be fun to see people get in the mm -hmm. comments and then the chats talk back and forth to each other because it's really a moral dilemma. Yep. And, and it'd be interesting to see people talk about both sides of it. And mm -hmm. there's, I feel like, a million points to it. So you all might come at it with a different perspective than what we had. Yep. Um, so leave us some comments. While you're doing that, you might as well subscribe. <laughs> Just saying. Like, subscribe. Yep. I, I'm not good at doing all that stuff now. Like, subscribe. Ring the share, bell thing. Ring the, the bell. Subscribe Ooh. on Spotify and <laughs> all the other stuff. All the other stuff. I, we found are... out, I found out that we're on Google Podcasts. We are? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently how we post through... Uh, so we, we post our stuff out through Anchor, and how we post through Anchor, I guess, that puts on Google Podcasts, too. So, Guys, we're on Google Podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. Woohoo. Um, so, yeah, find us on all the things. Twitter, we're Facebook, everywhere. All of it. Yep. Talk to us. Let us know what you think, um, because we want to know. Yeah, absolutely. And discussion's always good. Yep. And until next time, we will still be here. Yep. Same spot. Yep, same spot. Same spot next week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Peace. Hi guys, I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for Code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button. Help us out, help us grow. Um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. Um, and of course, YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.